have social anxiety. As someone part of American society, I never really got used to the idea of socialization or just doing it, whether it was through text message or face to face. Let's just say socializing is not my thing. Anxiety is defined as feeling uneasy, worried, or scared. Those feelings are one thing, but when you're texting someone on Snapchat, Instagram, or Facebook, all those feelings build up inside me. When waiting for someone to reply, I always worry that the reason they're taking so long is because they're mad at me or I said something to defend, offend them. Most of all, I just get nervous by talking to someone in general because of saying the right or wrong thing. How many of you have ever felt nervous to send a certain text to someone? It can be anything, like telling a secret or confronting them, just anything, and you're just waiting for those three dots to show up. <laughs> That's, it's a little scary, isn't it? That's me every day, except it isn't telling a secret or it isn't confronting someone. It's just trying to have a conversation with someone. Many people with social anxiety feel this way. Although there are various reasons as of why people have anxiety overall, social anxiety is a specific kind that I experience every day. Today, I will be, I will be showing you talking about my personal experience on social anxiety along with the social media effects of it I've discovered and finally ways I've learned to help my social anxiety. What is social anxiety disorder? Social anxiety is an anxiety, is a common anxiety disorder, also known as SAD, um, not the kind of SAD that you guys think, um, but it's where individuals such as me avoid any social contact or endure both mental and physical distress within social environments. What that means is Individuals with social anxiety disorder, they tend to go through, um, they tend to go through, low, they tend to have low self-esteem in which it causes problems such as depression, bipolar disorder, or substance abuse. However, those are none of the things I suffer through. What I go through is I am the individual where I will try and avoid any social contact. It wasn't until middle school that I started experiencing social anxiety. When I was 12 years old, I realized that talking to people started to become a lot more difficult, and it just continued to be this way as I got into high school. I never really got used to the idea of making new friendships or forming new relationships. Instead, I just found it easier to be by myself. Now that you know a little about social anxiety disorder and how I deal with, like how I am with it, how does this incorporate to the use of social media? As many of you know, adolescents and young adults have slowly got engaged into social media. And as you see, there's, these are the most popular, which is Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and YouTube. How many of you use any of these apps to talk to people? Well, what you don't know is individuals and myself use these apps to hide behind our screens and say what we want without it having to be face to face. Although it isn't good to always rely on these and to stay away from people because according to a source, um, Brain Blogger, they state that social media can be the ground zero in irritating pre-existing anxiety among people as well as cause anxiety to unfold. For example, cyberbullying. You all know what that is. Cyberbullying and what it can do to someone. Cyberbullying can cause someone to receive confrontations that they don't want, and they can also receive hurtful comments. Um, the reason, and this is why you do not want to, that's why individuals with social anxiety disorder and me shouldn't rely on the, these apps. <laughs> Other downsides of relying on social media is people with social anxiety disorder can easily push away those who aren't appealed to them, in which it makes it harder to connect to people as well as meeting them. Fewer individuals may feel left out when they see more eventful posts than their own. Like on Instagram, when you see a group of friends, you see that, well, you're going to be jealous and you just wish that you had the friends to post on Instagram with. Um, real world connections will continue to get harder as p 
people with social anxiety disorder rely too much behind the screens of social media, and it can cause problems such as stress and sleep loss as well. Although there are some benefits of, although there are some benefits of social anxiety um, of social networking sites, um, social media can give the opportunity to inaugurate social connections with people. Um, a source states that called Very Well Mind, they are they know um, how to help with mental health disorders, and they state that interacting with others can help people with transportation, isolation, as well as the fear of leaving the house. So you're not always trapped, you know, trapped by yourself. Um, but, but social media does not only help make new friendships or build relationships with people, but it helps people with social anxiety disorder to really practice their social skills to make them feel safer. And it also helps people with social anxiety disorder to share their emotions so they don't have to let it, up, let it in. For me, I've always known that social media for me have, I have always felt it was easier for me because I never felt comfortable talking to people in person and I felt like texting someone, I felt like for some reason for me, I could express myself more. I didn't have to worry about saying the right or wrong thing and I just, and instead like when I talk to them in person, I wouldn't be uncomfortable saying the right or wrong thing because I've already talked to them on Instagram DMs or on Snapchat. Um, however, I do know that avoiding talking to people wasn't going to get me anywhere. And so I've learned five ways to help slowly overcome my social anxiety, which is work number step one is work with my emotions. I know that talking to people for me isn't easy and I shouldn't go all crazy and freak and panic. Instead, I should be calm and patient. I should wait to see how it goes and just wait for that feeling to go away as I slowly talk to someone. Um, step two is focus on my feelings. If I'm feeling a certain way, I, should, I shouldn't hold it in. I should tell someone how I feel because it will take all that pressure and anxiety away. Step three, using distraction techniques. Usually when I talk to someone, I get anxiety because I'm scared that I might have said something that I did not mean to say to someone. So in order to distract myself from thinking about that, I go on my phone, I play games, or I read a book because I've learned that it naturally helps you calm down after you're having anxiety. Step four is patience. I shouldn't assume that every conversation that I have with someone is gonna go bad. Instead, I should wait and see and meet that person, see how it goes, and just be patient. I shouldn't worry and think about all the bad things I'm probably going to say to them. Or yeah. Um, and last and finally, be funny. I shouldn't be all awkward or shy or nervous. I should be humorous. I should try and make that person I talk to smile. I should tell a joke so it's so it isn't awkward and so we're both comfortable. And so this is why I wanted to tell you about my experience with social, with social anxiety because a lot of people experience, go through this and there are five easy ways that you can help someone who experiences this. And thank you.